Hi folks. Um, I made a video the other day about chronic pain management programs and apparently some people misunderstood the points I was trying to make. So I'm doing a follow-up video to try to establish the points I was trying to make and clarify any misunderstandings. Number one, I am not against chronic pain management. If you have chronic pain and it's very severe, it can be disabling, it can make your life a living hell. And I think any doctor worth his or her salt would want you to have that chronic pain dealt with appropriately. In fact, in Texas, we have an Intractable Pain Act that says that doctors shouldn't be afraid to give appropriate medications to those folks who have intractable pain, meaning pain that just doesn't want to go away. Chronic pain is a good example of uh, a high intensity, usually. Now, so I'm not against chronic pain management. I am not against use of opiates or opioids in the management of chronic pain. I have a friend that's a pain management doctor and I regularly send folks to him for medical management of, of chronic pain and I feel very good about doing so because he does a good job and in many cases they need medication for the management of the pain they're having. Uh, obviously, I think, as I think a lot of doctors would agree, that if you can manage a problem without use of medications, that's all the best because you won't have the problems of the cost of medications and side effects. However, to be practical, most people would agree that some people's pain is so intense that they need uh, something beyond um, a couple of aspirin. Now, so I'm not against use of opioids or opiates. I'm not against chronic pain management. I'm not against pain management. Do I agree that folks have legitimate issues secondary to having chronic pain, i.e. pain more than six months, in the nature of psychological problems, including but not limited to clinical depression? The answer is yes. If you are in pain for a long time, it can make you depressed. And it, it, I would be concerned if it didn't make you a little bit depressed to hurt all the time. It can make you feel, if you're a man and you're unable to work, it can, it can mess with your, your sense of self-image, uh, your sense of being a provider, of being a whole man. I mean, that's just things that I've seen for 20 years. I know it's a fact. I'm sad about it, but it happens. And in those cases, it's, it's often a good idea for folks to talk to a psychologist, a psychiatrist, get appropriate counseling, and if necessary, medical management by way of pharmaceuticals. So I'm not against use of pharmaceuticals for management of psychological problems. I'm not against folks getting counseling for that. So I want to be clear. I'm not against those things. And, you know, let me go a step beyond. I was the one that did a video a while back warning you folks that the FDA panel had uh, suggested, they made their official recommendation to the FDA, that they ban, that means do away with, make illegal, Darvacet, Darvon, Percocet, Percogesic, um, Vicodin, Oxycontin, Hydrocodone in general is generic. Those medications that have acetaminophen in them. Now the FDA thankfully hasn't uh, implemented that recommendation because as I can guarantee you a lot of pain management doctors would have a lot of problems because then they wouldn't have lower level things like Hydrocodone or, or Percogesic or Darvacet or whatever as an initial starting point before they went to something more serious like Oxycontin or the other medications available. Um, so I was warning people a while back about that. Now let me go even a step farther. Here in Texas and I, I believe probably in a lot of other states, there is pressure on your doctor and every other doctor to get you off of things like hydrocodone, Xanax, all these things. Now where is that pressure coming from? Well, you know, I mean, there are certain protocols and, and accepted ways of prescribing and the fact that you shouldn't just let people take it for the rest of their life. However, the real pressure, in my understanding, and I've looked into this considerably, it comes from the medical board, that is the governing board over DOs and MDs, and by way of law enforcement. Law enforcement is it has it in their craw that they're... All these people are taking advantage or abusing prescription medications. I don't believe that. I do not believe that the majority of people do not handle their prescription pain medications properly. 
do I believe some people do? Yeah, sure. I mean, there's some people in any any endeavor who are going to abuse the process or get around the way you're supposed to do something. However, out of 100 people, I don't think 99 people are hooked on drugs and just using it to get high. I don't believe it, and I don't think that the facts or the statistics will bear out that silly notion. But it seems like the, the law enforcement community would like to believe that most people are abusing prescription medications and they're putting a lot of a lot of pressure along with the uh, medical board on doctors to get you off or not even to prescribe opiates at all. Nowadays if you go to the ER in Tyler or Longview or a lot of the East Texas communities you're not going to get hydrocodone. You're going to probably if anything get a prescription a prescription for Motrin for goodness sake and then probably not even Flexeril anymore where they used to give Vicodin or Hydrocodone, the generic form. So there's a lot of pressure on them to get, get you off or not to have, let you have access to these uh, opiates and opioids. So I see that as more of a political issue than a medical issue because to some extent the medical board and the law enforcement community are functionaries of the political machine. So, you know, I see a, a a conflict brewing, if you will, between on this side, if we think of it as a wrestling match, on this end we've got the medical board and the law enforcement, and on this end you've got the poor patients and the, the prescribers. I get communications by email um, on a regular basis from around this country of people who tell me, Doc, I am scared to death. My husband or I have been disabled with pain for years and now our doctor's talking about taking away our pain medicine. That's sad. And again, I believe it's more a political issue than a, a medical issue. And you need, if you believe that this is a problem for you or will be a problem for you, you need to get politically active. You need to let these politicians know that you don't want them messing in your medicine chest. And you don't want them forcing you to live every day in a living hell of pain 24-7 or 18-7 or however long you're awake. Now, that, so for the record, I'm not against opiates or opioids used for pain control. I'm not against pain management doctors who, by the way, are often anesthesiologists and know pretty well the proper way to manage pain. That's what they do for a living. No, I'm not against that. In fact, I'm, I'm for that. Now, what am I against? I'm against interdisciplinary slash multidisciplinary clinics who have a certain protocol that's eight hours a day, four hours stretching, four hours therapy, and the other four with an LPC, licensed professional counselor. In, in now let me explain what, what programs I'm against. I'm against those programs of that nature that put revenue generation as their primary concern and who don't seem to care that they're helping patients, decreasing their pain, decreasing their, their uh, depression, and are just interested in continually having those patients come in for session after session over and over and generating literally thousands of dollars in bills per patient. And what I have advocated, and I think it's a modest proposal, and, and I'm writing a long article that's an ongoing article in one of my blogs, is that I think that interdisciplinary, multiple, multidisciplinary pain, chronic pain management programs need to be subjected to the same rigorous, um, strict parameters and investigations, experimentations, etc., that you would put a drug for asthma to. You know, uh, most medications, they want to have a placebo study or a sham study. They want it to be double blind. They want all these different experimental parameters in place so you can say, yes, this is a legitimate effect. This is really helping people. And it, it really is because of, a, of an effect of the actual thing that we're testing as opposed to a feeling people have or an expectation that if you run them through this process or if they take this pill they're going to get better. That's where the sham and placebo studies come in. Are there sham and placebo studies in this interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, chronic pain control deal? Not that I could find. 
And I, I looked on the National Institute of Health. There was a good paper by a guy that's a PhD. And uh, he was citing different studies. And, and as with a lot of studies you read, they look good when you first look at them. You know, it's like if you're baking a cake and you say, oh, it's got three eggs. You didn't look to see if those eggs were rotten before they were thrown in the cake. You just know there's three eggs. So, for example, they were talking about a Japanese study that upheld the efficacy of these interdisciplinary chronic pain management programs. Well, as I've indicated to you, the average chronic pain management program captures that person for eight hours. They give them a little time, a little break for lunch, just like if they were a regular job. Was that Japanese study done that way? No. You know how many minutes a day? You know, like eight hours. That's eight times, uh, eight hours times 60. That's what, 480 uh, minutes times, say, a 30 uh, minute uh, lunch break. So what's that, 450, 450 minutes? You know how long the Japanese study was? It was 30 minutes a day, once a week. And it was for the patients that were available or could show up. 30 minutes a week for not a day, not hour a day, 30 minutes. You want to model your interdisciplinary chronic pain management program after the Japanese study because the Japanese study found it was effective? Fine, do that. I probably won't have as much of a problem, especially if you're not billing out a grand a day a per patient for eight visits or ten visits at a time. You know, I mean, my proposal, which is very modest, and, I, and like I say, I'm not against chronic pain management. I'm not against use of opiates. I'm against any program which uses patients as revenue generators regardless of outcomes. In other words, if a person is depressed and unable to work and their pain level is an 8 or 9 on a 0 to 10 relative pain scale, and at the end of generating $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 for an interdisciplinary chronic pain management program, they're still at an 8 or 9, they're still having problems with depression, they're still unable to work, do you think that's an, that's an effective program? Do you think that you've shown a good outcomes based, or as medicine likes to call it, best practices um, method at that point? I don't think so, and I don't think insurance companies should pay for it. And I don't understand at this point, except for the fact that you have these studies, like this PhD who basically, you know, cobbled a bunch of studies regardless of whether they had sham controls, placebo controls, or regardless of it was 30 minutes a day versus 8 hours a day. I mean, if 30 minutes a day is just as good or better than 8 hours a day, why would you keep some poor guy that's hurting all, all day and charge out a grand or $1,600 a day per patient when you could see them 30 minutes like the Japanese were doing once a week and get the same results. Does that make sense to you? That'd be like you taking medication that the Japanese had found you can take one pill once a week for a dollar and it did just as good as taking eight pills a day every day for thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, I mean, I might not be the smartest uh, person in the world, but even I can figure out that if you evaluate these programs with an outcomes basis, they might be found wanting. Because you have to have some parameters, some guidelines, and uh, to judge